Welcome to Illinois Law, sponsored by the Illinois State Bar Association. My name is Marty Dolan, and tonight we're talking about internet crimes and internet prof uh, three guests who are experts in the field of uh, internet crime and dealing with it on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, first, uh, to my left, is Dave Haslett. Dave is a lawyer with the Attorney General's Office in Chicago. He's worked there for 11 years. He's currently the Bureau Chief in High Tech Crimes. He's a graduate of the University of Illinois. Welcome to the show, Dave. Thank you. Next to him, I have Sarah Migas. Sarah uh, is, has her master's in social work since 2007. She is a 14-year veteran of the uh, of social work in the field of social work, and is also taught in the Chicago Public School System. She's currently assigned uh, as the Internet Safety Specialist for the Illinois Attorney General's Office. Sarah, welcome to the show. Thank you. And last but not least, I have Rich Wistocki. Rich uh, works as a detective for the Naperville Police Department for 22 years. For the last 18 years, he has been involved specifically with internet crimes against children. He's the author of the 2010 sexting legislation. Welcome to the show. Thank you. And I know you all have you know, significant backgrounds in dealing with internet crime on a day-to-day -day basis. We can get into that, but more important, we want to talk about the issue of the show, which is internet crime and prevention, and more important, prevention. As we know, uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, just with a click of the mouse or on your computer, our children and our friends and our family members are connecting with either banks or institutions or connecting with friends, looking at videos, and there's millions and millions of people doing this every day. In that, the Internet's fairly new still. Uh, we're just trying to keep up with it, and as, as parents, as educators, as lawyers, uh, social workers, you know, we have a huge job in front of us. So, uh, with you, uh, working with the Attorney General's Office in Prevention of Internet Crime and teaching kids and, and parents what to do, uh, what is the main focus that, that you start with? Well, let me start by saying, you know, in 2009 we did a survey. We wanted to get a pulse on the kids in, in Illinois to, to figure out how are they using and experiencing technology. And we found out that 24% of our kids had received inappropriate photos. 25% of our kids had sent inappropriate messages. The average age for getting a, a cell phone was 11, and the average age for getting on social networking site like Facebook was 12. We recognize kids are growing up online. And just as we, we talked to them before technology about how to be humans and citizens, recognizing what they're doing on technology, how much time they're spending, we, we now recognize the importance for teaching them how to become digital citizens. And really when we look at that concept of being a digital citizen, embracing technology, we need to look at three things. Who our kids are talking to when they're online what kind of information they're divulging when they're online, not only identifying information, but what kind of story are they telling, depending on the kinds of photos that they're posting, as well as messages, right? And lastly, how are our kids treating other people and being treated? And how do we teach our kids when to identify a red flag that needs to be reported? And in, in that we have to teach these kids how to do that, we ourselves are still understanding the internet, mm -hmm, still mm -hmm. trying to grasp, you know, the advances that go on daily or weekly and, and new mobile devices or whatever it might right. be. So Rich, you know, as parents, the things Sarah's uh, talking about and how important it is to recognize that the kids are on there so much, right. w you know, what do we do? Well, the, the biggest thing is to have communications with your children. Sarah handles very well the education component, uh, teaching our kids, and we also need to be teaching our parents that not my, my kid would never do that is, is a fallacy. They need to understand that, that having good talks with your children and appropriate talks, uh, even monitoring software. Now, some people may call it spyware, but it's not. My first line when I go and teach parents is that I'm going to tell you something that you may not like, but you know what? You're responsible for your children. You're not only responsible for them in their physical life, but you're responsible for what they do in their online life too. So how do you get a grasp of that? Well, monitoring software is a great way for, for kids and parents to talk about it. If you want this device, here's software that goes along with it. There's software um, device, there's software for cell phones now, uh, such as my mobile watchdog. And what it does is you can see every text message, every email, every picture, every phone call, and you can limit when those children can be on that phone. 
So software such as this is a great tool for parents. And I'll get I'll get to that in a second. What what I'd like to know first um, is some specific things that we can do as parents uh, in dealing with our kids. The action that we can take, not only getting the the the, the software, but what are some other types of things that we can do, Dave? Well, well, the first thing is, you know, you talk about how some people are afraid of the Internet. You know, some people are very comfortable with it. Uh, but the first thing the parents can do is kind of educate yourself. You know, the kids are on Facebook. Get on Facebook. Get an account for yourself. Uh, experiment with it. You know, post things to other people's walls. Add some friends to yourself. You know, a lot of adults are out there. A lot of adults are on Facebook. Some aren't. And if you're not, I would suggest you get on there, learn how to use the tool, learn how kids are using it, you know, practice posting a photo yourself or, or posting uh, comments to other people, sending messages to other people, so you understand first how the tool works. Because if you don't understand how the tool works, you're not going to be able to effectively monitor what your kid is doing out there. And then once you feel a little bit more comfortable with the tool, uh, sit down with your kid and go through their account. You know, sit at the same computer, have them log in with your, their user ID, their password, and walk through them. Then you'll be familiar with what the different aspects of Facebook are or you know, whatever service that their kids are using. And then walk through and look at what their messages say, look at who their friends are, and walk through and say, you know, all right, who's this person? Do I know this person? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and walk through step by step everything that your kid is doing online. And it takes some time. It takes some time to familiarize yourself with uh, the tool itself and then to sit down with your kid. And then there's certainly going to be resistance from the kid. Uh, but ultimately, you're the one that's going to be responsible for your kid's safety and how to use the tool and how to be effective and safe when you're online. So, you know, you have to take the time to learn how to use the tool and to monitor what your kids are doing. And I would also say, you know, a few very practical tips um, would be if you're giving your child any kind of device, learn about the device, what it's capable of before it's given to the child. Right. Second, create a culture in your house of what, what, how technology is going to be used. Set parameters around technology. Make it a condition. Right, and, and, and do this early mm -hmm. rather than waiting until problems start surfacing in maybe junior high. You know, limits. So maybe two hours on a computer at night for fun. Or, and I think a very good tip is to keep the cell phone out of the bedroom at night. So just some very practical boundaries and, mm -hmm. and limits and parameters with this technology in the house. And again, helpful to start that when they're first being given access. Right, and it's like anything else that you would deal with kids, that you have certain rules and parameters, but then also there's consequences for violations. That, you know, you have to feel free to, if they violate the rules, uh, whatever your rules are, and each parent has an individual, how far they're willing to go, but if those are violated, you know, you may have to take away their account, uh, take away their cell phone, uh, you know, take appropriate measures in order to have the kids have some consequence for, for violation of the rules. Yeah, and, and, you know, we're talking about this because we know uh, the internet, uh, either the use of Facebook on a mobile device or even the computer, mm -hmm. there's just been an explosion of crime, which Absolutely. you see, right, Rich? Right. All the cyber bullying aspect is, is huge for us right now. Um, when, we, when we see internet predators going to these kids, you know, predators are going to go where the kids are. Um, if it's so easy to make a fake Facebook account and send friend requests to say the predator has one child in mind that they want to molest or uh, prey upon. That predator will go to all of that person's friends before he goes to that person because what are the three things that um, our kids look at? They look at the information on the account. Well, we can all lie and put up whatever we want. They look at photos. They can go to Photo Bucket. They can go to Tiny Pick. They can go to Google and get 20, 30 pictures and put it on one Facebook account. And the third thing they look at is uh, the network of friends that this person who is doing the friend request, who else does that person know before I add them? Well, kids don't check. They, just because that they're friends with one of their friends who's in English or in gym, so what we try to do is we try to tell them, put a fourth step in there. Before you accept that friend, go to your friend, hey, do you know this guy? They, she said she was from California coming to school here. Do you really know them? No, I just added them. Goes next friend. No, I just added them. Well, that's a red flag because if this person says they're friends with that person, they're really not, so they shouldn't add them. Well, and it seems like what, what all of you are saying from the law enforcement and social work perspective is we got to start getting involved, either the, the schools, the teachers, uh, business mentors, or, or anybody else. we got to start figuring out what's going on out there. Yeah. So, right, and, yeah. you know, the Attorney General's Office and other law enforcement agencies have definitely recognized this. You know, I always tell parents it's about intentional parenting. It's about intentionally inserting yourself to ask the questions about the who, the what, and the how. Right, but also we've acknowledged this, and so 
there's a law that requires schools to infuse internet safety into the curriculum. So it is a state mandate that in grades 3 through 12, this has to become a dialogue in the classroom. Has that started recently, this, uh, this law where they have to start doing this, or is there something that's become a custom in the school system right now? No, it was, it was in the past couple of years. Yeah, past couple of years, but the problem is when the governor signed it, nobody threw any money at it. Mm -hmm. So the first year they were, they were depending on federal uh, tech ed funds, they were using it for that, but once that's all dried up, there are no funds for people, for mm -hmm. schools to have these type of elaborate mm -hmm. educational mm -hmm. seminars. Mm -hmm. and, and, and As a result, our office, sorry, did put, compile resources that already exist that are really extraordinary to help teachers create a dialogue with their students. Right, and I mean your office, the Attorney General's office, and you with your efforts with the Naperville Police are doing great things out there to try to educate, you know, the schools and the kids and the parents, but you can't do the job, you know, completely on your own. There's just no, you just can't do it. Right, and like right. Sarah talked about, uh, on the Attorney General's website, we have resources. We basically compiled the curriculum and different uh, tools that teachers or educators can use to, you know, Sarah goes out, Rich goes out, I go out to the schools, but like you said, we can't be everywhere at once. And uh, so in order to help facilitate the, the uh, individual school districts of getting the material and incorporating into the overall curriculum, uh, we've made those resources available on our website as well. Well, just like you go to a, 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 you know, a parent night at the school or wh whatever, you know, that behind that is the school teachers need to have the parents working with them hand in hand to do the school work. Mm -hmm. right. Now, I think the same concept right. should apply mm -hmm. it with should. understanding mm -hmm. the internet. It should, it should, but again, the, the whole thing about um, parents, only one to five percent of the parents show up. That's so frustrating for us. Mm -hmm. When we go to schools and there's only 10 parents, but there's 600 families. What is that? What is that? Right. So we have to make it mandatory for our parents to show up. And what is the biggest thing that the parents show up to? Is athletic night. If we can get our presentations in a, an, on athletic night, we can have three, four hundred sets of parents. Mm -hmm. Well, let me, let me just uh, digress a little bit. Let's talk a little about the pressures of Facebook, because mm -hmm. that seems to be mm -hmm. where the kids are now. Mm -hmm. and, and what are the pressures that are out there so parents understand what their kids are going through? You know, Marty, I'm so glad you brought this back up. I wanted to touch on this, because we've addressed a lot of crimes against children, but the reality is, in addition to crimes against children, you know, kids are making a lot of choices on a day-to-day -day basis, and potentially, mm -hmm. if they're not thinking long-term, term, which a lot of our adolescents aren't good at thinking, you know, A to B to C, they're posting inappropriate photos, potentially, and or comments, therefore creating this digital footprint image brand about themselves. And what I see regularly is that kids have doors closing in their faces, right? Yeah. Whether it's lost scholarship opportunity yeah. or employment opportunity or getting kicked off or set, suspended from an athletic team or extracurricular period. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in addition to talking about crimes, we need to just talk to them about, again, discretion and, and what is appropriate for this incredibly public and permanent platform. Which they don't understand. Right. Right. Dave? right. And one of the things also is, you know, we keep talking about, and I think we typically think about in terms of the internet, uh, high school kids, maybe down even to middle school, but it's never too early to start educating your kids about proper online behavior, proper computer behavior, uh, you know, starting with the younger kids, things about not sharing your password, not putting out personal information, uh, things like that, because even though they might not be on Facebook at that point, uh, they may be doing things, uh, younger gun, uh, excuse me, game playing sites like Club Penguin, uh, where they're learning how to interact with other people on the web, so it's never really too early, you know, it's age appropriate in, in all cases, but it's never too early to start teaching them from the beginning how to behave properly online. Well, some of the things you just mentioned, it seems like parents sometimes will just use a, a computer or a mobile device, whatever, as a, as a babysitting tool, right. and they walk away, and they don't realize what's going on. Right, and I don't want to also take away all the prevention we're starting. There's some onus that goes on. I asked MySpace to do, they would do it. Right now, we're in the advent of Facebook, and Facebook has, ha has to come a long way to be a law enforcement partner. They, at first, were kind of resistant to what we wanted to do as far as law enforcement guides, you know, as far as subpoena compliance. Uh, there's something that we're asking for now called EXIF data. It is all the digital footprint of the pictures that are being uploaded. We want that background information for our investigations. As investigators, I suppose Facebook could say, you know, on the, on the flip side, it's a good thing. You know, if somebody's lost or somebody went missing or abducted or whatever, you can use the internet in these types of tester. Sure. But there has to be a balance. There definitely has to be a balance, and, and we are trying to make Facebook 
a law enforcement partner to use their abilities to further our investigations to protect children. We're not so much concerned about um, rights and privacy of children, but we want to protect them. And when there's predators out there uh, going on Facebook and trying to get to our kids, they need to be more responsible and be more um, uh, responsive to our requests in, in a timely fashion. All right, let's, let's uh, talk about the other things uh, kids are doing out there and teenagers, which is texting. And that's, you know, the concept of texting is just new to, I guess, parents and some older folks, but, you know, kids don't even email anymore. They right. think that's archaic. Sure. So what is going on with texting? What is it that we need to know to educate ourselves, and then what do we do about it? Dave, I'll start with you. Okay, I mean, with texting, the biggest problem right now, as far as texting is concerned, is you know what Sarah talked a little bit about with bullying, about using the text messages to bully as well, but also uh, sexting. And uh, Rich described what sexting is, but it's a big problem because, uh, as Sarah talked about, the kids don't think about the long-term consequences. Mm -hmm. You know, when they have that boyfriend or girlfriend from high school, you know, they think they're going to be with that person forever. They think they're in a relationship, and they think that they're an adult, and they want to act like an adult. So. Consequently, they'll take inappropriate pictures of themselves, send it to the boyfriend or the girlfriend, and thinking you know that they're not going to share it. And and maybe they won't while the relationship is ongoing. Maybe they will, uh, but certainly you know, high school romance romances don't last forever. And when that romance does break up, uh, that these things can be forwarded around. And we talk about permanency. You know, once you take that photo and send it out, if that person then sends it on to five of their friends and sends it on and on, or posts it to a website or posts it to a Facebook that once you take that image, it is out there and it will be out there forever. So you really have to kind of get the kids thinking. And some kids, you know, they'll go to one of the presentations and start thinking about it, oh, that's a good idea, and others won't. But we try and get the message out there about the permanency of these types of, uh, you know, these actions, they do have long-lasting consequences. You want to think about those. You know, and in addition to that, when I work with kids and parents and educators, I talk a lot about, well, you know, our kids may make choices, we have to help them make choices, but what do they do when they get it? That's a big problem. You know, I mentioned earlier, 24% of our kids are getting inappropriate images. We want to start working with them when they're in third grade and getting right. images that aren't to the, to as far along the spectrum as sexting and talk to them, or bullying messages, rumors, gossiping, right, rumors just to um, teach them to stop it that that stops with them so that it doesn't continue to harass or exploit another person and encourage them to tell an adult. But that means for us as adults, we have to be aware of our reaction if we want them to come to us. We know it's going to happen. I brace the kids for it. I brace the parents for it. So we have to be aware that this is a potential so that kids are willing to come to us with what they have. And, and, and piggybacking on what Sarah says, uh, how many parents tell our kids, if you give out personal information, if you tell people where you live, if you give out your picture, you're going to get grounded, we're going to take your vi devices away, you're not going to go on the internet, you're not going to go out your friends. So when the kid is caught up in the situation that they have no control over, or maybe a predator or another kid, and they, they're in the situation, are they going to tell the parent? Well, that answer is no, because they're scared of the random, and that's what makes the danger. So what we try to do is having those parents have those conversations and saying, look, if you're caught up in something, I'll give you an example, the 24-hour rule. I tell kids, when you're honked off at somebody, when you're mad at somebody else at school or another kid, and you're ready to text it before you press send, think about it. Maybe you might want to wait 24 hours before you send it. I know you're upset now. Give it a cooling down period. But if you still think you need to send the next day, at least you've thought about it and know the consequences for sending that text or that image. You know, that's, and oh. that's good advice for everyone too. Right. Yeah. Right. 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 Because right. as adults, we struggle yeah, with yeah. some of this. True, we don't have true. the best boundaries with true. technology, right? <laughs> we we check our emails, our blackberries yeah. in the middle of the night, right? If we're doing right. this, of course, kids who have phones right. in their right. bedrooms are probably going to do right. this, right? When they're pretty peer driven. Yeah. But you know, if adults aren't having conversations with kids about who to talk to and what's appropriate to post, they may not get the best guidance online when they're watching their older peers, right? because older peers are friending indiscriminately, right, with friend lists of up to 600, 700, 800, 900 people. So if they're not getting the dialogue, the, the conversation about that, they might not have the insight, oh, maybe it's not a good idea to friend these people because they're watching it and it's the norm. Also with friending too much, or sorry, posting too much, right, too much in comments, inappropriate pictures, they're watching this as the norm. So if we're not intervening, 
and, and challenge them to think about why this might be risky or dangerous for their own personal lives, period, they might not have that insight. So it's really up to us to challenge them to think about that. Right, and there's a really important thing that you know Sarah brought up with regard to the friends, uh, especially on Facebook, you know, gaming, uh, traditionally we think of gaming like the Xbox and the Wii and things like that, but really gaming has gone online as well. And uh, a big component of Facebook is gaming. And there's this uh, encouragement by the games themselves to add more friends, uh, because the more friends you have, the more successful you're gonna be within these games. Um, so there's this, you know, urging to have the kids add more friends, add more friends, because that's going to get you farther along in the game. So they add people that they have no idea who they are. And, uh, you know, that's one of the things the parents want to sit down with the kids and review who their friends are and see whether or not they really should be on the child's friends list. Um, because there, there's just this indiscriminate adding of friends uh, that you're basically, and when you add them as a friend, they see your entire life. They see your photos, where, you're, where you've been, postings to your wall, who your friends are. Uh, so it's really important to watch that and be careful of it. Well, I mean, it seems like the common theme across the board is the um, the barrier between, you know, your child getting out there and being exposed to big problems and, you know, uh, who knows what could happen, that the one thing that's going to stop it is parent intervention. Absolutely. So, uh, you know, parents have enough to deal with. They, the economy's bad. They're working hard. They have to deal with drug issues in school or college. They, gotta, they have to pay for school. They have to be involved in homework, and now they have this whole you know, internet thing. Okay. So, uh, you know, they have a lot of responsibility, but maybe we should look at, you know, the, the, what you're discussing here as an opportunity to reconnect with kids. What do you think about yeah. that, Sarah? Yeah. Absolutely. There are, there's a lot of positive out there when it comes to technology, and maybe I should have started by saying, premised everything by saying that technology is great. Yeah. Right, it is great, and it, they can develop creativity and really explore relationships. It's just a matter of teaching them how to do it appropriately. Mm -hmm and engaging them and, and letting them know you're curious about what they're doing because they'd love to share it. So um, just about five minutes left in the show, but I, but I want to talk about a couple things that maybe you brought up earlier, Rich, uh, which is some of the preventative tools we can use, uh, the spyware and the watchdog. So why don't you just talk about that for a minute, please? Well, you know, in, in five years, uh, Technology is probably just going to be this handheld device that you plug into a docking station and off you go. So it's going to be with you all the time. Parents struggle when they're driving with their kids. They're at the dinner table and the kids are constantly texting and parents are, well, who are you talking to? Oh, just my friend. And they leave it at that. That's not enough. So the, the software such as Mobile Watchdog or some, um, my Mobile Watchdog is, is a place where parents can put it on their kid's phone the kids know it's on there, so it's not spyware, and they can see every text message, every email, every photo, everywhere that that kid goes on the internet. They can shut it down whenever they want to, um, but when it comes to computers, such as key loggers, um, there, there's a company called TrueCare that's actually uh, affiliated with some schools, and they have fundraisers for parents to do the same thing that Mobile Watchdog does on a, com on a phone. They do the same thing a on, on a computer where a parent can log in and see everything. They can get alerts if something's dangerous. Um, I, I, I like I liked, uh, showing parents uh, key logging software such as Spectre Pro, where they can actually see everywhere their, their son or daughter is going. They can get every screen name and password their daughter puts in and gets alerts right to their um, email, either on their phone or uh, on their computer. So. When the kids know that the parents are monitoring, you will see that the kids start shaping their um, personalities online, where they know if the parent can see that, they're not going to be involved in that type of behavior. Um, Dave, let me, let me just ask you about just protecting your computer. Mm -hmm. Just aside from the mobile phones, what can you tell just the parents and the general public, aside from the kids, what do we do to protect the computer? We're protecting the computer itself, uh, there's a lot of different aspects. One is uh, having a proper virus checker. Uh, there's programs out there, either paid or free, that are a lot of great ones out there. It's just doing a little research, you know, Google is your friend. Uh, looking for virus software and keeping the virus definitions up to date. Keep your operating system up to date. So that means uh, when you have these Windows updates, download them, install them uh, promptly. And then also uh, that you, again, use your common sense in terms of what you access and what you do uh, because even the best virus software in the world, the best, uh, you know, keeping your operating system up to date, if you don't make good choices in terms of, you know, clicking on that link in that email, uh, all the protections, the, the computer protections in the world aren't going to protect you. Um, 
sir, let me go back to, uh, to kind of how we started this show. And, and, you know, we all can agree the Internet has just, it's just a matter of how do we harness it a little bit and how do we, mm -hmm. you know, start to get, pull the reins back a little bit mm -hmm. on our day-to-day -day interaction with our kids and our, and our family and hope that the schools do the same thing. But um, a lot of kids share things on the Internet, like mm -hmm. digital sharing or iTunes mm -hmm. and things like that. What do we as parents, uh, to kind of wrap up the show, what do we do to, to stop that or at least warn them about that? Well, we have to keep talking to them, and it can't be a one-time conversation. It has to be reinforced gently multiple times. And I would encourage parents to remember the letter P because there are so many simple messages we can teach our kids about technology with the letter P. This is a very public platform. There's really nothing private about this platform, but our knowledge with or without our consent. Um, and so it's not even kind of like a diary. It's also incredibly permanent. We have no way of knowing if the things we've posted really are ever offline. People, again, can copy it without our, our knowledge. Um, also, we're not anonymous, right? Ki a lot of kids are very emboldened. Adults are em emboldened their behaviors and think that they can do whatever I, they want and there's not a digital trail that leads back to them when in fact there is. So reminding them of those, those things. There's so much that we can do and we really appreciate your time and your insight tonight. Uh, again, my name is Marty Dolan. This is Illinois Law, sponsored by the Illinois State Bar Association. Again, thank you.